All right. Um, welcome everyone to the tools to get started with a uh, tools to get started with a Drupal eight project. Um, as most of you know, or maybe don't, uh, there's already a Drupal nine going on. Um, but this it's uh, this talk is it, it's just a little bit of I'll say like it starts from like a basic point where if you have no Drupal experience or if you're a web developer and you're starting to um, to develop and work with Drupal, uh, I think this is one of those talks where I wish I would have been when I was at my point, at that point. Um, I'm one of those developers that when you started, you know, like you start with like, it's just working in your computer, you create the folder yourself and you start, you know, dragging files, HTML files and all that. But um, now with all this technology and um, I think it's, it's very important to I think just to know the tools are out there and they're available for you. Um, so just to give you um, an overview of, of what we're going to be talking about, um, I'll give you a little bit of background about me, then we're going to go into the tools that we'll be looking into for this talk. Um, we'll look at the individual tools and um, I'll be speaking a little bit on, in terms of like why I think these tools work. Um, in, in this case, it worked, they worked for me, and they worked for the, some of the developers when they're starting. Um, some key takeaways, and then we'll have a Q&A. Um, we don't have to have the Q&A at the end, so feel free to ask any questions throughout the, throughout the, the, the talk. All right, so I try to make the picture a little bit smaller because it was a little too big for the presentation. The presentation is up um, online already, just so you guys know. Um, my name is Paula Garcia. I'm originally from Costa Rica. I came to the US back in 2006, so that's why you might hear a little bit of an accent. Um, I am a big soccer avid, and um, after my soccer years, I started running for fun. I actually I've been coming to New Jersey to run the New Jersey Marathon. Um, they have marathon for about, since 2013, so. Um, I have two dogs and two cats. And um, in general, I, I'm a Drupal front-end developer at Big Soul. Uh, they're headquartered in Fairfax, Virginia. We work with technologies like HTML, CSS. Um, now we work with SAS, JavaScript, uh, PHP. Um, you know, Drupal is based, based on PHP, so knowing PHP is a big, um, big plus. I am a uh, computer science adjunct at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas College. That's up north in uh, Spark Hill, New York. Um, I went to school there, so I always feel like it's, it's good to give back. Sometimes if you can, um, kind of like with this talk as well. Um, as time goes, you start forgetting things, so I'm actually happy that they are recording this as well. Um, I'm also a cybersecurity student, a master's student, and I do a, a TA for, um, for some of the cybersecurity students that are previous to the cohorts where I started. Um, this is at uh, New York University. Um, some of the technologies I used there were Kali Linux, Metasploit, um, SAP, uh, CTI, I've done CDFs, um, AppSec, uh, ethical hacking. So, um, turning now into the, the the security part of it, and with that, I'm taking a career path within looking into Drupal security and how to um, how to better the security within Drupal development. There are three um, seats up front. We are, okay. Yep, there's three. Up. You got three total. <laughs> Just three. Yeah. Wow, you're really popular. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. Maybe it's the name, right? It's three names. To it. <laughs> So, so you guys are still good with timing because uh, we're just getting into the actual tools we're looking to. Um, there was an, an earlier talk about Composer, so if you guys were able to attend, um, I went to that one. It was very insightful, very good. So one of the tools we'll talk about it here, it's Composer. Now, we're not looking, we're not going to look into Composer very deep 
um, like like how do, how does it work or, or we're gonna look at some of the commands but more from a make file view um, because we're gonna be using a repository that uh, have been built by the the Bixel team um, but from like a Drupal project so um, look at composer when we're gonna look at docker containers um, so when you're gonna start up your local environment um, nowadays uh, you're gonna hear the term docker a lot um, this is because containers are very, very popular. So we'll look at uh, Docker for Drupal, which is um, one of the technologies that is being used with this repository. Then we're going to take a, a little bit of an overview on GitHub. And um, I'll explain some of the terminology used uh, in the development world for people who are totally new. So like if, if you have used GitHub and you can provide insight as well. Uh, feel free to do it while we're going through those um, through those slides. Uh, we'll look at Drupal Composer and what is what we have now, which is called the Drupal Project. So we combine them, and we'll look into it once we get to it. Um, and then that's the one that we end up combining, which is uh, within Pixel. It's called Drupal Project from the Drupal Composer Drupal Project project. Um, then we'll take a look at how we are using the make file within our uh, repository. Um, and how you can actually make of the make file your best friend um, when it comes to a quick setting up your quick development environment. Um, so why Composer? And I usually like when I first started, uh, like I was telling you guys before, I just I used was used to just having like a folder set up locally. Um, there were back in the days. I mean, I look young, but I'm not that young. But back in the days, we didn't really have. A, um, like Git and GitHub, this is semi new now. Um, so we used to not have not been able to. When you save the document, you used to be like, okay, if you didn't save it again and you you forgot something, it's gone, right? So now we're gonna we have all these new tools. But Composer came up back in uh, March 2012. Um, it actually was inspired uh, by npm, which is um, a package manager. Um, but we get to Composer. Composer is really not a package manager. Composer does, um, it, it, it's in charge of the libraries. So if you're gonna have a Drupal project that has some dependencies, library dependencies, Composer takes care of that. Um, it's a dependency management uh, of libraries in PHP. So if you, again, if you are new in the development world, PHP, uh, learning a little bit about Composer, it's, uh, it's something that you can start getting your, your, your feet wet with. Um, when you're working with Composer, the libraries are usually on a per project basis. So when you're going to start your project, uh, just know that you're, you may have maybe two or three different Drupal projects. So you're probably gonna end up with three different Composer files within the project because they're all um, on that per project basis. And that's something that has to happen this way. Um, and the installs and the updates of the libraries are done through Composer, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, now, one of the things that could get out of hand sometimes with Composer is, it, like, if you can, if you have a library uh, that you're declaring for your Drupal project, and let's say that, that that library is dependent on another library. Composer takes care of that, so you don't have to worry about it if you're running your project with Composer. Um, if, if that library is dependent on another library, once you just do the install, Composer just grabs all those dependencies and installs them for you. Um, it's good because you can run them on Linux, Unix, uh, Mac OS, or Windows, so it's pretty flexible in that sense. Um, and also you can, with the way this repository that I'm going to show you, you can install and run it using just a single command. So going back to the reason why I also like to say that this talk was for everyone, if you're only a project developer, if you don't have any development um, skills yet or you don't know any programming but you want to start learning, um, maybe you are a little bit scared of the terminal and looking at those commands and that could be scary at the beginning but um, when you're using something like Composer, and you have, you're in charge of managing a team of developers, it's pretty easy for you to set it up because you will end up using the terminal, but you will see that because the commands are very simple, you will be uh, 
you know, up and running very simple, like in a in literally like ten minutes. Another thing is Docker containers. So, like I said before, Docker is very very popular nowadays. So why do we like Docker? Um, it is a standard unit of software, which it means it really runs on the operating system um, at the abstraction layer. And what Composer does is it packages all of the uh, code and the dependencies of your project together. So um, in difference with uh, VMs, which we get a lot, like what's the difference between a Docker container or a virtual machine? Um, one of the main differences is that Docker containers runs um, on the operating system. Virtual machines, they, they tend to use the hardware as well. So um, the reason why Composer is great is because it's lightweight and standalone, because it doesn't depend on the software. Um, there are two packages, um, one Linux and one Windows-based application. Um, they run the same regardless of the instrument structure. Again, going back to why they're different from virtual machines, um, Composer containers, uh, sorry, Docker containers uh, don't depend on the hardware. So it makes them faster and um, gets your environment up and running without issues regardless of the operating system that you're using. The, um, the Bixel uh, repository that I'm going to show you um, started and grabs a couple of, of um, so it's pretty much tell, like what we ended up doing was grab some uh, tools from, from uh, what is called Docker for Drupal by Woodby, and it grabs some tools from a, another repository, which I'll show you, and they put it together to create the package that will help getting set up. Um, so the cool thing about Docker for Drupal, uh, they're open source, and they offer the Drupal 8 stack um, to deploy and just manage your applications. They also have something called the Docker Compose, and it's already pre-configured. Um, now, docker-compose, uh, it's a YAML file. So YAML, it's a, it's a very, again, if you open a YAML file, you will be able to understand there's no really code. It's uh, plain English, and you can read what it's like the instructions that are in there. But that's what Docker containers use um, as like the instructions in order to start running. And Docker for Drupal also runs on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Are there any questions so far? Okay. Um, and you can, yeah, you can jump I, in. I use uh, Doxel on my Docker. Okay. And usually it works pretty well. I'm having a little problem with it right now. But <laughs> using the fin commands and... No, yeah, using the fin commands, but I'm, right now I'm having a problem with Somebody locked up on me and I can't get it restarted. <laughs> so yeah, Doxel, it's um, another service, and I've used that before, uh, where um, it sets it up for you as well, and you can create commands to yeah. actually run your projects um, and Drupal projects. Um, okay. Can you comment on Doxel versus Docker? <coughs> Find the advantage, disadvantage? Well, do you use, um, so you can be running a container, and then you can also be running uh, Doxel. So Doxel, it's, um, it's exactly, it's not a, it's not a management tool, it's more of a uh, command line. It, 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 it runs under Docker, and it, I think it's, it own, uses its own containers within Docker. Within Docker, yeah. So it, and it's sort of, I haven't seen Drupal for Docker, so I'm not, I can't compare to them. <laughs> yeah, and it's not really a package manager. No, um, it's just a environment. Yeah, so for example, in, we can look at it when, once I give you the examples of the make files, uh, but it's you provide a certain set of rules, um, and when you type a command, in this case with Docso, for example, we use fin, fin, and then, um, for example, if you want to start your Docker container, and you have Docso installed and set up, you write you write fin start, it starts up the container, um, and any services within the container. Um, so it's kind of like also like a like a shortcut document that helps you navigate through the project. Um, and we can do it like a comparison when we're actually looking at the make files. Um, so that was a good question. Any others? I'm jumping to GitHub. <laughs> so just to give you the, like a little bit of like a general uh, development world 
type of conversations we have within GitHub. So GitHub is a cloud-based environment. Um, anyone not familiar with GitHub in the room? Okay, cool. So you guys have used it. Uh, the platform, you know, it pretty much you can collaborate with other developers. Um, your code lives in there. Uh, it uses the version control system called Git. So again, if within your computer, you will have to have, in order to run this kind of project, you'll have to have Git installed. You will have to run, have a composer. And you will also have to have um, the repository. So the developers code and they use repository. So when you, just like in your computers, when you create a folder within GitHub, you will have a folder with your documents. So GitHub starts up, you have a repository that has like a readme file if you want, and that's where you start your projects. Um, they, they used to be that you used to be able to have a, a only public repositories unless you had like a paid account. Um, after Microsoft took over GitHub, the company, then they gave you the ability to have also private repositories. Um, but that means you have a little space where you can have all of your files, your development files, and you can either have it private and share with your team, or you can have it in public and share with the world. So most of the projects, if you've worked with open source, are um, some of them, most of them are in uh, GitHub. So I'll just run through some of these because uh, when we start the, um, the, the demo, then we're probably gonna hear some of these terminologies, but just um, quickly, if you guys already know them, uh, or if you have any input on in any of these technologies, feel free to jump in. Um, when it comes to GitHub, some of the basic terminologies, we talk about repositories, we talk about forks, branches, uh, commits, pull requests, and um, in general, Git. Git is the main technology that drives um, GitHub. So again, Git, if, uh, we'll get to it, but Git is a version control system. Um, so when we talk about uh, repositories, they're used to store code. Um, they're like folders, or and they also, well, you can have a folder within a folder in um, your repositories and also files. Um, in GitHub, you can store pretty much any type of files. Um, once you create the repository, you actually, you're able to uh, kind of create a copy of that if the repository is public. So you can go in and the way we did it was, and you will see once we get to the project, but you grab a repository from someone else and then you can build on that. So you don't interrupt the other person's work or development work, you can build from that. Um, we also use something called branches. Um, and when you have your project, um, that this is we're talking about already. You have your your files in your in your repository, local in your computer. Um, maybe you have it already in the cloud. But when you're working in your computer, you can create branches, and the branches will go to uh, GitHub as well if you have an account. Um, it's like an abstract way of separating code when you're developing versus the code that is already in the. Uh, in like the main master branch, we call it like the main code. Then there is also called something commits. When um, you have a change and you're developing, you make a change, it's working, you compare with your libraries and you're comparing your, maybe your Drupal project, you're making sure everything is fine. Then you can do a commit and you send it to, to your um, main repository and say, okay, where, wherever branch you're on, you make the commit to that branch. Once you're ready, you're going to end up doing what is called the pull request. So you have your branch. You can think of it as you have your main code down here. Then you're going to have a branch that's coming here. Maybe it has a feature, a new feature that you're adding. Maybe like if you're working locally and you're creating a view locally or something like that, but you don't want to uh, disrupt code within your main uh, branch, then you create that. Uh, you create another branch. And once you say, OK, this is what I'm working on is good, then you commit it. So it's committed in this branch here, but the main branch remains untouched until you do a pull request. And whoever is approving ends up saying yes or no, you know, you can, you can uh, merge this code with the main branch. <coughs> Again, the main, uh, the main um, software here is called uh, Git, which is the version control. What this does is you have your main project, and like we said before, when we started developing back in the day, there was no way to keep track of these things when you made a change, and, and let's say you cannot go back to something you did. 
But now with Git, you make a change, you can always go back to, uh, oh, let me, if, 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 let's say you have a website and your website crashes for some reason, you can always go back one version. Uh, so this allows you to create different versions of your project. Um, now one of the libraries, and I'll go there in one second, it's a Drupal Composer Drupal project. Um, there is a Composer template for Drupal projects within this um, repository. So this is also going to be within GitHub. So we'll go to that. It's very easy to install and it manages the site dependencies because they're using Docker uh, Composer. And um, then there is a, a structural task that are organized already there um, automatically. And we'll get to that in one second. Then we had, going back a little bit, we had the Docker for Drupal, and back here we had the Drupal Composer. What we end up doing, and some of the cool developers we have at Bixel, they ended up putting together the two of them. So they combine Docker for Drupal and Drupal Composer. And what ends up happening with this repository is that some of the elements from Docker for Drupal are brought into this project, and some of the elements from Drupal project are brought into together. And it makes it even easier to get started. Um, so from Docker for Drupal, we're grabbing the HTTP server, we're grabbing Drupal itself, and we're uh, grabbing like uh, databases. From the Drupal project, from Drupal Composer, we grab the Composer YAML file, the make file, and some um, continuous integration, continuous development uh, features. Um, that's the reason why we'll end up talking about the make file. So if everybody, or does anybody not know what the make file is? Are you guys all know? So you're all, cool, okay. So it's, um, when I, so this is, like the make files are, they date back to the 70s. Um, but it, it's really like, they've been taking like, like they're more popular I feel like nowadays because of all of these new tools. Um, so one of the reasons why I think it's, it's uh, we have to maybe make it our best friend is because make files are make, going to make commands very easy for us. So within this project, there is a make file and they, what they do is they have a, like a set of uh, directives or tasks, um, any commands that you can actually execute. And when we talk, uh, before we mention a little bit um, Doxel, and I believe with Doxel there's something similar where you have certain commands that you can run within your project if you have Doxel installed, and um, they're going to be very similar to what this make file does. Um, the make utility, creates like an automation tool um, that's very uh, very easy to use and also generates some specific tasks, tasks that are more efficient. So this is an example of the make file within uh, the project that we have. And um, if, as you guys can see, we have um, a few commands here like up, down, stop, uh, prune, pr uh, ps, and shell. So when you're within, this, um, within your project, when you have already installed it using Composer, you can run these commands. Just you say make, and then whichever command is in uh, highlighted in orange. So if you do make up, you see that um, the instructions here are are they clear in the back? Can you see the a little, a little bit? So the first one, for example, app. What it's going to do is it's going to echo back to the terminal, uh, saying you're going to start up the containers for and then uh, whatever project that we're working on. Then the command is going to do a docker compose pull, and then it's going to do a docker compose up um, and clean up some of the containers and then run, start up your project. So what happens there is your containers are going to start running. Um, and same thing with, so down for example, just, you know, you, you, you give the commands that you want, the main command, and then the things that are going to happen. Um, that's how the file is structured. So, for the demo, now you guys can do it alone if you would like. Uh, what I ended up doing, because most of the times when I go to presentations, the live demos always end up like with some issues, or I'm like, maybe I won't even have internet here, so you know, you never know. 
But I, what I, I ended up doing was I uh, created recordings. So the things that we will end up doing, you could start doing them at the same time. So the recordings are kind of like done live at the time when I did them. So uh, if, you, if you want to do them, feel free to do it. And um, I'll go to these in one second. But um, so pretty much we'll open a terminal. So the first thing is the um, the 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 first thing you want to do is just to make sure that you are actually um, you're not seeing it yet, but I am. So first thing you want to do is, and I'll put make this a little bit big, is that you want to make sure that you're actually running the versions of the software that you need. Um, so if you just do a Git version and a uh, composer dash dash version. So for both commands, git dash dash version, just make sure that you have git installed. Um, composer dash dash version, you, you make sure that you have composer installed. Um, go back to. Now, the creating the. To create the, the actual. Let's see. It ends up opening at the other end, but when we're actually creating this project, what we're gonna end up doing is, now with this, we're gonna, um, we're using a composer, and it's just like one composer command. What this is doing is, composer is going to, when you type composer, it goes to this page, right? Composer already knows to go to the packages.org and look for packages there because this is their main um, repository for any packages or dependencies that your projects will have. So it goes there to grab, um, let's see. It goes there to grab whatever project or packages you need. So in order to do that, we type uh, composer, uh, and then this is like the one that's the longest one. Um, we we'll create a project. We'll give it the name of the project. In this case, it's found at uh, big cell forward slash um, Drupal dash project. Uh, then the semicolon, uh, we're gonna use the, the Drupal 8. So 8.x dash dev uh, is for development. Um, in this case, Drupal, Camp New Jersey demo is the name of the folder where I'm going to be storing the files. Um, a stability dev, and then we call it like no interaction, which means we're just going to see um, the simple commands where Composer calls it. Then we start in the installation. Um, so if you guys do like a, like even down here, it says it's going to take us about, was maybe about two minutes or three minutes. But, um, it goes through the installation and it starts loading the repositories. Um, it uh, updates the dependencies. Now remember, if, if you don't have anything yet, if you just have in your computer, you go and install Composer, and then you go and install Git, and um, you say, okay, I just want to start a Drupal 8 because I just want to do it for fun. And I've never done it before, so I just want to start the project. Um, make sure the two versions are installed, and you run that command, and that's it. Um, now. We go into the directory, the one that we just created. Um, we cd into Drupal Camp New Jersey demo. That was the name that we gave it up there, where um, you can see up here where we had Drupal Camp New Jersey demo. So right here, we cd into it. So we open that directory. I'm gonna go back one second here. What you guys, right here, where we see is this part. We're copying the environment file. So what happens there is within that repository that we grabbed from Composer, it, there is an environment file that they give you as an example. Um, and what we do is we copy that and we create a new file out of this file called that .env. Um, and then we, we're gonna use that file because um, 
some of the environments are there, like Drupal, the project name um, that we're gonna use, and uh, and just to look at it, we run the cat command. Uh, as you can see, some of these uh, are the variables that are being used. Um, and so that's pretty much what the what the that EMV file looks like. Just going back up a little to um, to the beginning of that file right here. You see how right here project name. In this case, we're calling it uh, my Drupal 8 project. Uh, we have some the base URL. Um, so this is because we're running this locally. This base URL is going to be when you go on your web browsers and type Drupal.docker.localhost. That's where you're going to see your development environment locally. And then they use, um, you know, this, in this case, because remember, this is for local development. We don't usually, in product, production environments, you're not, uh, these are, this is gonna be very different, so. Um, but you have all the information for your database, the database that we are using, using um, Linux, like, you know, we, which version of Linux we have. Um, what you see with the hashtags here, how we call them nowadays, it's uh, things that are commented out but that you can also have available to use within the project. So if you don't wanna use a specific version, you uncomment that version, use a different version. So it's, um, this, this, that EMV file sets up your, your main project um, names that you need. We want to copy that project-based URL because once you start running, uh, I mean, just if you know which one you gave it, then it's easier. But once you start running that, you will um, you will you will need that URL to go to. So just to give you a little bit of um, overview of that file, so it uses Postgres as well in this case, um, and. That's part of the installation. Um, now, if we go to, let's see right here. So that's that's creating. Um, and when we did it, uh, we are gonna go to installing the, um, using Composer as well. And So in this case, we did um, the make file that we have has a command called install. So like I said before, very simple command. You type make and then install, and that's it. That's going to start installing, now in this case, your actual Drupal project. <coughs> the, the step before was grabbing the actual uh, repository and putting it in your local. Right, so we did a composer um, and we grabbed the, the entire repository, put it in your local, we called it uh, Drupal Camp New Jersey Demo. Now this part is actual, um, you know, using all of the composer files that we have built in and bringing your uh, Drupal 8 project now in. Make install, it starts installing those dependencies. It uses this file called Docker Compose and runs the composer install because within my make file, I indicated to do that when I type make install. And it's just going to start loading um, the repositories, the packages, and then we'll see how it actually happens. Um, so if you guys are actually following it, it's going to take around the same time. But um, overall, this process was about um, a little bit less than 10 minutes to do. Question? Yes. Do you have uh, sample make files? Um, available? Yes, I can do. I can provide that. In okay. uh, um, I might be able to upload it to the New Drupal New Jersey camp. Yes, that would be good. Um, if not, then I'll show you where the repository lives um, on the in the cloud, so that you can get to that. Also, I noticed uh, when you ran that composer in the beginning, it crashed. Oh yes, I can actually. I was going to point that out. And <laughs> before it keeps going, that one was. So the if memory. you if you notice the memory yes right. with okay. PHP um, because when you're running Composer, it um, it actually it's 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 very uh, 
you know, it, it says, like, if you're already declaring a certain amount of memory for PHP, right. it respects that. Right. Um, so it goes in, like, first, if you have it locally, if you have, uh, if you have it set up for um, a specific amount to use. Um, if not, then there are some ways that you can go in and change it within the files. There's and I'll give the link. a plugin on Git. Okay. Which handles that. Oh, then, um, and the plugin could be installed with Composer as well? Yes. Perfect. So there you go. What's the name um, of the plugin for? It's um, Compo um, Composer Drupal Optimizations, but it's by uh, the project. Uh, it is uh, Z A P O R Y L I E. Is the okay. Thing. And this was from David uh, Hernandez. Oh, perfect. Okay, he, yes, um, yes. He's has giving his a YouTube um, composer okay. tutorial, and he had recommended using this. Oh, perfect. So, so you install it with composer before you even bring it up. Right, you do a require first, mm -hmm. and then you run the rest of the full blown composer. So you don't get that. Perfect, perfect. Yes. So I, I, I actually provided in the resources that they, when you go to the getcomposer.org, there is a an URL where you can go in there to uh, troubleshoot that issue, which I ended up, you know, doing for the, for the demo and everything, but thank, thank you for that. Um, so, like, in this case, as you can see, it starts to install all of the packages uh, that are within this project. Um, some of the most popular are, uh, as you can see, Symfony, and um, we also install Drush for Drupal so that you can give Drupal commands with Drush um, within the container. And it's just gonna keep going. It takes a little bit, so some of the packages that are bigger, you will see that it's going to kind of make, it's gonna pause there while it's pulling that, uh, in installing them. Um, now it's going and grabbing some Drupal core packages here, um, and then some others. Uh, while this goes, um, I guess something to note is that some of these packages with Composer is going to use the vendor folder and is going to put them all in that folder within the repository where we, where we have it. Um, if, um, it goes there, so it takes, uh, so there's a package here that's, it gives you the, well, in this case, when we're, when we're running, it tells you like something that I have to be avoided or maybe try to replace with a different with a different package. Um, it did this, if you notice, we created a copy of, of the, the roots and it puts them all in ready for the project to be used. Um, see, you cannot see the bottom right. Um, the other, the, the another step here is we're grabbing this, um, if you remember, we had to go and get the um, the local address, right? Where we're the name that we want to give our project, um, and it was in that that EMV file. So uh, we copy that, and we're gonna use it because we're going to need to tell um, our computers that when it looks at the local uh, your the URL that is used for localhost, uh, that's one two seven that o that o that one. Um, we wanted to say when you go there. Um, if we type drupal.docker.localhost, bring us to that local. Um, and we put this in our hosts file within the computers. Um, so that's, that's another step. This way when you try to run your project, you don't end up with, um, with any issues there. And see. Now, makeup is actually what's going to start in, uh, it's going to start up all of these Docker um, services. It starts up at the MariaDB database, Nginx, uh, port trainer traffic, and um, they're all, if you can see, it tells you when they're done, um, and then you are ready to deploy the application. So, we go to actually running it, and it's just um, as simple as you uh, opening your browsers, and going to the address. In this case was uh, the local host address. So um, just go into um, your regular browser and you type drupal.docker.localhost, um, just one semicolon, and then uh, in this case we're indicating it's port 8000. Uh, you can find that 
port as well within your um, that EMV files. That's where we specified. And it takes you through the installation. So at this point, it's been <coughs> set up and Drupal is running locally. So I think in this case, if whether you're a developer just starting um, learning the basics or if you're a project manager and you want to start uh, seeing what the developers see, um, it's pretty easy to, um, to set up. So let's close that. Um, there is also the make stop command. It's just as simple as typing make stop. And what that does is it goes, grabs all of your files, and uh, within your containers, it starts, it stops all the services that are up, like your databases and uh, the mail system or uh, the servers. So this, about one, two, three, four, five, six services um, where when we did the makeup, the six services run. When we are doing make stuff, they, they're stopping. So again, this is with the make file. And it's pretty simple as doing that make stuff. So again, just maybe type in the two. All right. Um, any questions up to this point? Um, was anyone able to uh, run it at the same time as I was running it? Or that was a little too fast? <laughs> <laughs> I got almost there, but not quite. Oh, oh that's good. That's good. Um, so yeah, I have the packages. Uh, I had a. I can answer your question first before I jump here. Yes. Do you have, to have uh, special permissions to run this? Or, or your, particularly if you're on a server? You, you um, no, because this is local, you have to have your login to your username, and not necessarily the admin, but your username, because when you modify the host file, you're going to need to enter the password. Uh, to modify those type of files, they live in the... So in this case, I'm doing this on a Mac, so they live within the ETC uh, system, file system, but you will have to enter the password You're there. a super user on your Mac. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for that step, you only need like the user password, not the super user password. There are some, some things that may need it, but for the, this entire process, you don't need to have a super user account. Again, just make, you know, make sure that these are this is for local development, so um, you're, there are some things or some steps that happen here that are not going to happen when you're actually running in production. Um, but when you come to, this is the actual repository for Drupal. It's at um, bigsol forward slash Drupal project, so it, uh, I don't see this on my here, but it's github.com forward slash bigsol forward slash Drupal dash project. And it takes you through the quick installation with Docker. Um, in the case, you would see the files that are here. Um, this is the that EMV file that we did and copied. You can see that we're already given the project name. Um, in here, we have the instructions to do it. So, um, you know. You don't have to follow the way I did it because maybe it was a little bit faster, but here you will have the exact same uh, instructions with some little bit of differences, but it's pretty much the same. Um, How does your Drupal project um, script differ from the Drupal Drupal project script? Uh, we're actually, we modified the, uh, the services that are used, the database, um, the Let's see, there is, um, there are some make commands that we have. Okay. Um, and let me see if I open, I have a, you wanted to see the, there was a file, right? The make file that we have. Uh, let me open it. So this here is the make file, and it has a, lot, a little bit more things going down, so it's more some of these, yeah, exactly. So there are more options, there are um, some more commands that we had. Um, we, we're already using um, Drush 
and like when we used we grab free composer we grab drudge so in here in the make file we we do a CR command um, uh, in general it's a it adds more than going to just the actual uh, the the one that we forked this from from the Drupal project one um, so that's those are like the main differences and we have some scripts here um, Everything went to the web folder for, these are your Docker Compose files, so that we pretty much use this for telling uh, Docker how to, what to run, which services to run, and so on. Um, but as you, like as you start getting familiar with it, with the code base and everything, you will start seeing like how things start to make sense and they get put all together. Couple hey, questions. question. Yes. Um, this make file, are they specific to uh, brush? Version I, I got to know that I mean I experienced at eight point three onward the make files were not working with rush commands. Um yeah I'm not sure with the older versions I know these we're using it with eight point eight. Eight point eight yeah and and this one works with trash so any other questions? Um yeah so uh, you know. If you if you get the chance and you do a you do run your project locally, um, I really hope it's uh, it's easy for you guys as it was at the beginning for for when I first uh, run the projects. Oh. So it is two thirty, <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. We'll um so we did the version checks. Um, we created the project. We did the installations. Um, just one thing to notice before we, this is almost, we're just gonna wrap up. Um, when you're running Docker in your computers, uh, you either run Docker for Windows or Docker for, for Mac. That's another service you need to have. Um, Docker for Windows does not work on, it only works on Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise. So if you're not in those windows, uh, use uh, something called Docker Toolbox that uses um, Docker Toolbox is going to help you with um, any of the projects that are um, a little bit older. So older versions of, that do not meet the requirements. We ran the project locally and we stopped it. So just a quick recap. We went over Composer. We looked at Docker containers, GitHub. Um, now you can see how Docker containers tied with Composer and why you need them, why you need the two of them, um, why we need a GitHub and uh, why we're using the, the make file, and then we went, we went over the demo. Um, there is another way. I'm leaving some resources. This presentation is going to be on the website. Um, so there are, this is resources you can use for, uh, to access the repositories, to access um, how to make a make file, why are make files good to use um, for containers and composers in general. This one here is the memory limit errors that we talked about it. So if you end up with those errors, how do we fix them? Or just use the plugin that, what's your name? Steve. That Steve recommended, so um, I'll do that next time for maybe the next presentation. Um, so if there are any questions, you can let me know. Yes? Is there a particular version of May that Is there a? Particular version of May. Um, so these are like the make files are Unix based, and it just if you create it, um, it really doesn't have any. If the file has no extension, so if you have it within the folder, uh, when you when you run the command, it knows to find to look for that make file. But there is no. Yeah, I know it's some versions more I make or you know, double the normal make. I don't no, I don't. Yeah, no. There's no particular version for this. <coughs> Um, so that's my info. If you ever want to reach out to me, um, I'm at, uh, I'm available after this as well. If you have any questions, um, thank you so much for attending the presentation. Appreciate it.